Elon Musk just successfully fought off a defamation lawsuit that was brought by a British diver. If you remember last year, there was a whole big fiasco of saving a, a Thai soccer team uh, of teenagers. And, you know, it went wrong in some ways. And Elon uh, tried to uh, try to kind of submit his efforts. They were kind of rejected. And uh, when once this diver went on uh, uh, CNN and kind of made some... Um, not such pleasant comments towards Elon. He went on 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 Twitter and essentially, essentially called him a pedophile. And that's when this guy decided to go after uh, Elon and submit this lawsuit. It was dismissed today. Uh, they went, I think, for about a week uh, of testimonies and so forth. But I am wondering, and uh, Eli Burton of My Test Adventure is going to be here in just a second to kind of uh, give us the overview of what happened and kind of join me in and uh, thinking whether you know Elon. Um, won the legal battle but lost the bigger PR war as actually happens a lot because you know there's a jury there in a trial but there's also a jury of public opinion and I have a feeling that there might be a better outcome if uh, Elon uh, have taken a different route here. So we'll discuss that. Uh, quick, quick. I have to correct something that I said in my video yesterday that was not correct. I was referring to uh, uh, Model 3, the standard plus range. And I mentioned it was 220 miles originally. Uh, it was actually 240. And obviously after the over the year update, it is now 250. So I just wanted to correct that. Uh, thank you for those of you who pointed it out. I should know better. I'm uh, from Russia, so I should be better with numbers. But thank you so much. I don't mind uh, uh, correcting myself when, when I'm wrong. So let's talk to Eli and see if I can be wrong twice in uh, two days. But before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Climate Exchange. Check out the Tesla raffle. It's back. Uh, only 4,000 tickets are going to be sold, so you can enter it, uh, uh, take your chances. But even if you don't win, you will still be donating to a great cause. And uh, if you do win, you can pick pretty much any test lane, any configuration you want, uh, want up to $195,000. CarbonRaffle.org is where you go. And, uh, uh, you know, by the way, it makes great uh, holiday presents as well. All right, without further ado, let me uh, bring Eli in and talk about it. Okay, Eli, so now there are two issues here, if, uh, if, if you correct me if I'm wrong. One is this legal trial and another one is obviously the public opinion. Let's talk about the legal trial first. Tell us what happened and how it ended today. So yeah, this is actually pretty interesting because we picked this topic to talk about a couple days ago, not knowing we'd have a decision before we even got to record this video. So yeah. the timing on this is excellent. Yes. But basically what happened today is the court, the, the legal trial was about Elon calling uh, Unsworth, if I'm pronouncing it right, Unsworth, referring to him as a pedo guy on Twitter. And the all result of the trial was that what Elon did was in fact not defamation. And it seems to be that it came down to Elon's lawyer's argument, which is, look, these guys were trading insults. And although Elon's insult was not a common one, this type of speech is protected free speech. And the, and the court and the jury agreed with him. So this was actually a freedom of speech. It actually came down to a freedom of speech issue. Well, that's very interesting because, I mean, there's also such thing as defamation. Again, I, I you know, I, I, neither one of us are legal uh, scholars here. But, you know, if you, you know, publicly suggest that someone has committed a crime and doesn't have any evidence and after that you suffer some damages, you know, this is illegal. And, you know, this was, by the way, a, you know, this was in a California trial. So it wasn't in Thailand or, or Britain. Um, so how did that not really resonate with the jury? Or did you did you feel like that that just the argument wasn't made very well? So the case that Elon's lawyers made and that Elon made was that, look, this guy called me, told me to take my sub and shove it where it hurts. And Elon said, this guy wasn't actually physically expecting me to take the submarine and shove it up my you know where that he was making a, a, a kind of a statement in jest and an insult. And he did as well back calling him a pedo guy, that it was really a in-kind response. And ultimately that's the, the court accepted that and the jury accepted that and said that, yeah, you know what, this, this was not an issue of defamation. One guy insulted one guy, one guy insulted the other. So this isn't a defamation issue. I think had Elon just called out, call, just came out and called this guy that unprovoked, I think it would have been a very different story. And I think we very well would have had a case for defamation, but in the context of the exchange, the jury said, these guys are trading insults. That it seemed to be that, I mean, that was the case that Elon's lawyers made and Elon came out victorious, so. 
what about the fact that you know obviously elon has a huge following and when he tweeted it out you know it was uh millions and millions of people that heard it though the the british diver he did go on cnn which also has a pretty decent sized audience as well um now the you know sticking the summer in what what is it where, where it doesn't shine that's not really accusing Elon of anything, but Elon ended up accusing him of being a a, a pedophile. Does that at all kind of a, you know what was the defense against that? Um, I think the, he used the same defense as that. From what I understood, he used a defense of that. Although this guy told him to shove that thing where the sun doesn't shine, he didn't actually mean it, and that Elon didn't actually mean it either, and was just insulting the guy. I mean, I, and that part got a little bit gray for me, but. That's basically the gist of, of the defense. Now, my understanding was all, uh, you know, that, you know, these trials are really not always about who's right and who's wrong, but whether or not, because, you know, the trial is, hey, give me money because, I, you know, this is how much you, you owe me because you've damaged my reputation and so forth. From what I understood that from his conversation, once they brought up all the text messages that this guy had with his friends and family in the last you know, couple of years, there wasn't any kind of distress. He couldn't prove that he lost on some book deals or, you know, he, he wasn't able to get a job, uh, meaning there was no actual financial or emotional loss uh, in any kind. And therefore, that even though Elon Musk could have been wrong, he really hasn't really taken away any ability from the diver to make money and hasn't really caused them any emotional harm. I thought that was actually... Uh, a, a big part of their defense. It was, and I think it was all of it in context that went together, but it also did seem to very well be that it hung, it, it, again, my interpretation of this, and again, we won't know exactly um, because a jury wasn't involved and we're not gonna get like a, a full written decision like you will in you know federal and appellate court and Supreme Court cases. But my take was that the, the freedom of speech issue did play, a, play an important role. Okay, very, very interesting. And, you know, I have to say, I kind of expected Elon to lose, though, when I saw some of the evidence, I was like, well, I'm not really sure if he's going to have to give him as much money as he was asking, which is like 150 million, but I thought he was still going to get something. So I have to say, I was actually surprised by the, uh, by the verdict, and it came pretty quickly also. Um, though I have to say that if I'm ever falsely accused of anything, and I have a choice between being on trial of you know twelve strangers and just render being being given a verdict by a judge, I would go with a judge any time. I'm not really sure if if you know I always trust the twelve random strangers. But all right, so he was found uh, uh, innocent or he was not liable, I guess. But there's a bigger story here, and you know you know my opinion on this, right? I I was one of the first you know, Elon Musk fans back in the day. I was such a big fan that I bought his car in the very beginning, have him, you know, have him signed it. And, uh, you know, and I, I've, as I cover this, you know, his journey for the last three years as a journalist, I've covered a lot of things that he's done that I thought was maybe, you know, not the best decisions for the company. But one thing that I've always thought was just on the human level, the indecent was this, you know, calling another guy a pedophile with no, uh, with no proof. Um, now that this actually been in the news for the entire week and this a lot of people were exposed to this um do you think this could have damaged elon's reputation like it did with me in my mind i don't think it did much more damage than the initial act, act action especially at the timing that it happened however i'm surprised that it actually that it was actually pursued in court and wasn't just settled because i think the initial ask was like seventy five thousand dollars and I'm sure Elon could have paid a little bit more and easily put this entire thing under NDA and the guy wouldn't be allowed to ever talk about it again. It would just, just gone away and never been a problem. But Elon felt he was right and made the choice to fight it anyway, which again, I was surprised, but you know, he really, he apparently really cared about this and I think was really hurt by some aspects of the whole situation, decided to pursue it. Was that the best thing for his image? No, I, I don't think so. And I don't think anybody would argue that it was. I mean, fans love to see him officially vindicated instead of just um, settling. But yeah, I'm surprised he didn't settle. And I'm sure he got a lot of pressure from people internally to just settle. 
Well, I think settlement can also be something like, hey, saying like, hey, listen, I realized I went overboard, right? Much like he did with SEC, by the way, right? Hey, I realized I went overboard and, you know, I, I understand I'm going to have some punishment here, but I just want to apologize and said I didn't mean to do this. I didn't mean to lead the investors. I didn't mean mislead the investors. I didn't mean to mislead the public about this guy, you know, uh, uh, not being a pedophile. Like, I, I, I feel like you know, that, that would be actually a noble thing to do, especially knowing that he has so much power and he has a celebrity status, you know, versus this guy who was just trying to save kids, right? Um, do, do you think that would have been maybe a better outcome and not look bad on, on Elon and just actually make him look humble and as a human being who made a mistake? Yeah, I mean, from a, especially from a PR standpoint, that would have been the best way to go optics wise, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's an interesting situation involving human people. And uh, yeah, like, again, I remember even watching at the time, very shocked by it, at least the initial comment. I was like, okay, he made an insult back. But ultimately later, I think he also did double down on it, which then, you know, he deleted. But yeah, I no, I think I think exactly the way you suggested that would have been better handling it would have been a better outcome and a much better outcome for his personal brand. Now, I think there's one, uh, 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 you know, evidence that wasn't allowed in the court. Correct me if I'm wrong, is that when Elon was talking to one of the publications about it behind the scenes, he really just literally said, you know, that, you know, this guy is, you know, uh, a pedophile. So he actually just flat out wrote it um, and you know he thought it was off the record then adopt the publication saying no that wasn't off the record but I think that part of the evidence never made it into the trial or at least did not make a enough effect on the jury because to me that was kind of an admission of the original intent of the comment you know what, what are your thoughts on that yeah I don't know the details of why or whether or not that was admissible so I, I really don't have a lot to comment on that but I think that would have played a part had it been included all right, so you know, let, let, let's let's go back to the you know to to Elon's sort of reputation, and you know, I think I mentioned it, it, it before, you know, and and correct me if if uh, let me know if you feel the same way. Four or five years ago, when I saw Elon Musk being mentioned on late night TV or in the news, he was a superhero. He was the guy who was making this amazing cars, putting us on Mars, and so forth. Now, when I hear his name mentioned, it's always he's always the, you know, butt of a joke. Um, and, you know, nobody really has done anything to him except for himself. Do you think this is the type of stuff that he might want to sort of cut down on? And I know he has lately to maybe get that reputation, back, you know, the original reputation of kind of a superhero and an earth saver, you know, back. What, what do you think? Is, like, do you think he's maybe learned his lesson here? Yeah, I think part of it too is they kind of went from this underdog that like everybody was rooting for, but nobody would believe would actually make it, right? So this superheroic character who's like, I'm going to put humans on Mars and I'm going to create electric cars and, you know, nobody believed the electric car thing was going to work. And then as they did it and as this thing got bigger and bigger and he actually started proving that he could do some of these things, it started, he started, he started becoming much more of an established okay, now this guy's successful. It's no longer if they're going to make it. Now it's about quarterly profits, right? It's no longer about if, if this car is going to get made. So now they're at a stage, at least on the Tesla side, that is far less exciting, I think, than the early days where they're fighting for survival, you know, changing the status quo. Like they're arrived, they're here, they're established, they're not going anywhere. So that aspect of the narrative is less exciting. And yeah, he's done some things across the way, some things that are that, you know, the the Joe Rogan moment that I think ultimately I think adds to his brand over broad culture doesn't really hurt, although the media flipped out about. I don't think that one was a negative at all. In fact, I think it made him seem very human, especially with how many people, you know, consume of that herbal product. Um, but there's been some others like the funding secured moment that rightly deserves ridicule. Uh, the uh, This moment we're talking about here with the guy on Twitter. I mean, yeah, I think those mistakes got to be cut down on to better value his brands. And I think he seems to be doing that. He's been a much different Elon Musk the last six, nine months. Uh, he's even been changing the way he promises because he's historically known for pushing the limits on publicly communicating deadlines on things. And although those things may be great deadlines to put your engineers on to try and drive innovation, it's not great for the public and the stockholders to be basing their buying and selling decisions based upon overly optimistic goals because it hurts your share price. I think Tesla's share price has been hurt a lot by overestimating where they were going to hit. I mean, compare that to Apple, who will consistently under-promise and over-deliver. 
Tesla seems to be doing that more now, especially if we hear the rumors we hear about Model Y are correct, that they may start delivering in Q1. That would show an enormous change, enormous restraint on Elon's behalf and keeping his you know internal deadlines not part of the public discussion. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think we, we, we made a video recently that, and, and I made a video as well, that, you know, Elon has really kind of turned around again. And not only he is under promising and over delivering, but his comments are much more, you know, um, uh, maybe thought through. And some of the comments that maybe would he would have made before he kind of, you know, let, lets things go. I really like what I've been seeing him, you know, from him. In the last few months, I'm still sad that he ended up going to this trial and rather than just apologizing and maybe settling, um, I think that would be more humble thing to do. But something about these big leaders with big egos who are also genius innovators that just a lot of times they just don't want to feel um, or show themselves that are vulnerable. And 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 that that's much harder to swallow for those of us who kind of want to see them as flawed human beings. Yeah, totally. And you know, it's this is part of the territory. These guys who do big things that change the world, it, it pretty much requires having a massive ego. Like if you're going to believe you're going to make the world something that it's different on the scale that they're trying to do. And you know, Jobs, Bezos, Elon, a lot of these guys have those traits in common that like if you're going to do something on this type of scale, you've got to have such grandiose belief in yourself and your abilities to convince other people that you can do it, that that's part of the territory. So yeah, sometimes we see them do these things. And we're not going to see them handle them the way we want. And that's, you know, that's unfortunate. And they take the hits for it. But if they can live with themselves, I guess that's all that matters to them. Yeah, well, I'm very excited about what's happening with Elon and Tesla in general. I'm kind of becoming a bigger fan again, if you will. And uh, I, I feel like both of us, me and you, have been contributing a little bit to this whole electric car revolution and everything. But I also know you just had your, uh, you know, second project released Uh we talked about it last time, but uh, tell us a little bit more about the the exciting uh, second version of the Adventures of the Starman. Awesome. Yes. So I actually have one right here next to me. It's called The Adventures of Starman Big Oil Strikes Back. Copies are going to begin shipping for the Kickstarter backers this weekend and for everyone else that's pre-ordered on Monday. Alex, I'm going to have to come by and hand deliver your copy. So I'm going to get that to you soon. I'm stuck with the first one, which is just as good. But yes, I would like I would like I would like to kind of be one of the cool kids and uh, get the second version as well. And there's going to be a giant flame sized hole because it's going to go right through on your dream on your green screen. So really? That's gonna... Oh yeah, because this one, yeah, I, I use a green screen and therefore there is a little hole in there. <laughs> yeah. So this is launched now, officially going live for everyone Monday, but people can already order because it'll begin shipping to you next week at BigOilStrikesBack.com. So this and, episode was made, unlike the first episode that was really just documenting what happened with the Falcon Heavy launch, this episode was made for the Tesla community, for the electric car community, and it documents big oil trying to sabotage Tesla, Elon, and the whole electric car movement. All right. That's kind of like who killed the electric car part three or so, but uh, which is kind of cool because I just recently met uh, uh, Chelsea Sexton and I posted an interview with her uh, from the LA Auto Show. Now, you yourself had some interesting travels uh, just the other day. I saw on your uh, uh, Instagram feed uh, must have been it looked great, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So I haven't got to make a video about it yet, but I have put some posts up on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So basically, I got to go be a part of NASA Social, which was got basically media access as part of being in the social media community and got to get behind the scenes access to a bunch of places in NASA, including the uh, VAB building, got to all these awesome photo opportunities, I even got to ask NASA a question, which was live on TV. And yes, I took the opportunity to ask NASA if they had any plans to build a Death Star. Wow. <laughs> and I got to tell you, the best part was they didn't say no. <laughs> hey, that's it, it, that 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 that's that you know I, I I love the fact that the the possibilities are endless now that you know Elon and SpaceX jump into this. So not saying no definitely gives you a lot of hope and and definitely gives gives you a lot of possibilities for your dreams. So all right, well listen, congratulations on that. Um, you know uh, the the links to your channel and to your Instagram are below for those of you. Who want to check that out once that video is out but uh hey listen great discussing this topic with me i appreciate it obviously i've i've it was kind of pretty you know close to my heart for a while i'm kind of glad that it's over but i'm um, looking forward to 
uh, you know, having another conversation uh, next uh, next weekend as well. It's great being on, Alex. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Well, I, you know, we we did plan having this conversation a couple of, a couple of days ago, and we were just going to kind of speculate what's going to happen with the trial. I personally thought that Elon was not going to win, so I'm actually would love to know what what was the legal uh, sort of reasons for for it. But really, what I'm happy about is that it's now behind us. I really wish you know Elon handled it differently, but I, I you know he's been learning. I think as he's gone along for, through the past couple of tough years, and I think he's coming out to be a, a better you know not just a CEO and a leader of this community, but just a better man out of that. So, and I've been really enjoying you know him for the last um, uh, for the last few months. So, uh, and of course, don't forget to uh, follow uh, Eli on his uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, he also got to ride in a Cybertruck and his video is also on his channel uh, with his experience. So check that out. And of course, follow him on Instagram. And uh, don't forget to get the Adventures of the Starman, uh, the All Strikes Back edition, which I don't have yet. All right, looking forward to all of the comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Thank <laughs> you.